let me show you what happens on the outro of Michael Jackson's Thriller. This is another one of those sounds that comes in for only one part of the song. I call it the Mini Moog Marimba, and it only plays in the outro, and it plays kind of a pattern that's unexpected. I'll show you what the sound is. The sound by itself maybe isn't the most special sound, but what makes a lot of things special is that they have their place. And this sound definitely has its place and it really fits into the track and the rhythm that Rod came up with in the arrangement really is what kind of makes it work and it sort of dances through the track and gives us this extra level of syncopation. So you just heard me play the track and when you watch the video that Greg and I did, which is the Thriller recreation video where Greg Fillengaines and I basically, from the bottom up, starting with the drum track, build every instrumental part of Michael Jackson's Thriller. This is at the end, and Greg will demonstrate how he played it like a steel drum player or like a marimba player using this kind of technique rather than... He played it like this. So I just cross this one hand over. And that, by doing that, it gives it a different feel because you play it kind of like, like a marimba player. So check out how Greg did it. It's one of a couple of different approaches here. You know, I could play it like a keyboard player. You know what else? There's glide on it. Shouldn't be, right? Mm -mm. Right, that's good. Or I could play like... Oh, like steel drums or something? Yeah. This gives it a little more of an authentic feel, you know, as opposed to... You're right. It sounds totally different. It's a little more of precision. Yeah, because when you're playing a synthesizer, it's not only about like a piano technique, is it? Mm. It's um, inherent, it's an inherent performance to the sound, mm. you know? So look out for this video. It's the Thriller recreation video that I did with Greg Fillengaines. We used many of the actual instruments that were used on the record from the bottom up, part by part, with Greg playing his parts. I did a few parts on the sound effects and and some things on the intro. So there's the body, there's the intro, and there's the outro. And that's how we created the song. It's everything pretty much but Michael. So you've seen the performance. You've seen how it fits into the track. Now I'm gonna show you how I created the sound because it needed to be a very functional sound. There's a lot going on. There's pipe organs that are gonna come in. There's a theremin. There's Michael doing his thing, which is going to take precedence over everything. The bass is continuing, and the track is building because there's layers of things added to the end, including the organ staging up with multiple layers. So this track has to be functional, but it adds a syncopation. So I, I created a very simple marimba kind of sound. I have two oscillators in the sound. The first one is at its 16-foot stop, and I'm using the mid-range pulse wave. So on the Mini Moog, you basically have three choices of pulse waves. Square, which is a pulse wave at a 50% duty cycle, and it's gonna be like the purest form of a pulse wave. And then a little more of a rectangle, and then a really skinny one that's gonna sound kind of more like an oboe. So I'm using the middle pulse wave, and it's set to a 16-foot stop, so it's an octave below A440. And then on the other oscillator, it's an octave up, and I'm using the really skinny pulse wave. So those are your choices on a mini Moog. On a lot of synths, you may have to move a slider, you know, from square wave to like a little bit more rectangle, but not really skinny. And that's what I did on the first oscillator. And on the second oscillator, move the slider to get really skinny on the pulse wave. But on a mini Moog or on some other synths, you can kind of choose from the fixed forms of the pulse wave. And then there at different levels in the mixer, I have full volume on oscillator one, which is the 16 foot stop, not super skinny. And then a little more than halfway up on volume on oscillator two, which is the really skinny one at eight foot. So it's an octave above. All of those two oscillators going into the filter, the filter's completely closed. So the initial filter frequency is shut down to zero. 
and I'm just dialing in the filter contour to a brightness that kind of cuts through the track, but not where it sounds electronic and not too dull. Kind of in there. And what gives it that sort of plunky sound is the resonance. As I add resonance, you get a little more what I'm calling plunk, but it's like it's in the middle of the sound. There's like some rotation to it or something. It's changing the harmonics in the middle of the sound and also makes the sound a little thinner. Listen carefully. A little bassier as I add resonance. So it's thinner. But that's kind of like a high pass filter would do something like that. It would take some of the lower harmonics out and keep the higher harmonics in, but it enables it to fit into the track without clogging it up too much. Um, resonance acts sometimes like a high pass filter. And all else that's happening in the filter is just a little bit of decay time. That's no decay time. That's a lot of decay time. I'll let you hear it. And then I'm saying a little bit. Now you see me reaching down into the VCA because I'm trying to control the release time. So the sound isn't short like that. So the two decay times are working in tandem. The filter decay time is controlling the amount of time that the filter is closing from this amount of modulation. Remember we were talking about brightness? Still enough to sound like an attack, but not too much. Not that, that. And then I have to control this decay time in the VCA so that it doesn't ring after I release the note. And you can see there's no attack time and no sustain level. So it's just using decay time in the VCF and in the VCA and getting them to work together. So one more time to make sure you follow that. The decay time in the filter doesn't make much difference unless I have decay time in the VCA. Now when I get the filter right, I can hear the speed of the filters right and I just bring down the decay time in the VCA to make the sound sing. A little more resonance, a little bit of wow to it. No modulation in the filter here, no modulation in the oscillator here. There's keyboard tracking, that's one more important thing. So when I go up to here, it's still bright. Without it, it would be more like this. So I would compensate the initial filter frequency. But when I play the high notes, they don't speak as well. So having the keyboard control voltage allows the high notes to speak. And now I can turn the initial filter frequency down because there's keyboard tracking. So it's sending voltage to the keyboard as I go up into the higher range. And go back to the technique. There we go. Please visit anthonymarinellimusic.com to sign up to our mailing list and receive exclusive free content. Kindly like and subscribe to our channel. It means a lot to me and to my team. And we're planning on making lots more fun breakdowns um, so you can get inside some of these sounds and inside some of the songs and kind of put the, those two concepts together. And um, a lot more interviews and some new things ahead. So. Keep the comments coming and looking forward to seeing you on more videos. So let's hear this sound one more time. The Minimoog Marimba from Michael Jackson's Thriller outro.